Kentucky's top law enforcement officer and Republican candidate for governor appears to be shifting his tone on the state's abortion law. It's our top story here at 5. I'm Eric King. And I'm Shay McAllister. Attorney General Daniel Cameron speaking on a radio talk show this week, revealing he would support adding some exceptions for abortion if he was elected. Isaiah Kim Martinez has been following these developments for us. Isaiah, how have things changed? Well, Shay, Eric, for many months, Attorney General Daniel Cameron has voiced his staunch support for the state's current abortion ban as it is written, now he says he'd be on board with adding exceptions for rape and incest if Kentucky lawmakers made it happen. If our legislature was to bring legislation before me that provided exceptions for rape and incest, I would sign that legislation. There's, there's no question about that. And the conversation on News Radio 840 WHAS was prompted after an attack ad you're about to see from Governor Andy Bashir's re-election campaign. Daniel Cameron thinks a nine-year-old rape survivor should be forced to give birth. And on the radio show, Cameron also responded to the ad, calling the claims made shameful. Now today, in a statement sent to WHAS 11 News, a spokesperson for the Cameron campaign said, quote, Daniel Cameron has consistently been the pro-life candidate for governor and supports the Human Life Protection Act. But if the situation in Kentucky were to change and the, and the legislature brought him a bill to add exceptions for rape and incest, he would, of course, sign it. Meanwhile, the Bashir campaign telling us, quote, either recent polling numbers have changed Cameron's core beliefs or he is lying to Kentuckians now that he is seven weeks from an election. Now, coming up right here at 6 o'clock tonight, we talked to a Republican state representative who earlier this year sponsored a bill to add more exceptions to Kentucky's abortion ban. His response to whether that could happen next year, that's coming up in the next hour. Hey, Eric. All right, Isaiah, we'll look forward to it. Thank you. Also a reminder for you, right now, Kentucky's abortion ban only allows the procedure if it's to save the mother's life or to prevent a disabling or disabling injury. Now to an ongoing issue in Metro Louisville, street racing and burnouts in public parking lots. The police call it incredibly dangerous and very time consuming for patrol officers. Over the weekend, they made multiple arrests. Take a look from the Sky 11 drone. You can see tire tracks left behind and a lot right by Slugger Field. This scene on Saturday was described as hundreds of vehicles doing donuts. Kavira Bitiganza was arrested just after midnight on Saturday night, according to the police report. Witnesses told officers they saw more than 100 vehicles racing and blocking the intersection at Witherspoon and Preston in downtown Louisville. That man is now charged with racing on public roads and reckless driving. And across town on Preston Highway, another man was arrested for the same thing the same night. Right before 11 on Saturday, Allen PD says Wilker Bravo was racing and speeding in a parking lot on Preston Highway. Witnesses told police more than 300 vehicles were doing burnouts in that parking lot. And according to the police report, Bravo also had open beer cans in his car. He is now charged with racing, driving under the influence, and driving without a license. So you may have seen some of these tense moments in the Highlands this afternoon when people were warned to shelter in place. LMPD detectives say just after one, they got a call from a guy who said he just shot a woman and was going to shoot his two children next. Police and the SWAT team swarmed the area near Bardstown Road and Lucia, right by Bloom Elementary School. But once they got into the home where the crime was reported, they discovered there was never any crime. Police are calling this a swatting situation. Swatting is, of course, a fake call to emergency services in an attempt to get a large number of armed police officers to a particular address. The police department said it is very frustrating and will be investigated. And we just learned some new and disturbing details about one of the city's more recent homicides. An initial call Monday reported a shooting on Broadleaf Drive. Well, today we found out that the victim was not shot. He was attacked. This happened Monday around 4.30 p.m. Police say they got a call from somebody yelling for help. That call was tracked to Broadleaf Drive near Cane Run Road where officers found one person dead inside an apartment. After an autopsy was completed this morning on the victim, it was ruled that the victim had been assaulted and strangled. Police have made an arrest in this case, charging 30-year-old Jalen Forrest with murder. Right now, police in Elizabethtown are turning to you for help finding the person who stole a car with a baby inside. 
It happened Sunday night at the home on a home on Michelle Avenue right off of 31 West. Within an hour, police tell us a patrol officer had located the car. That was it. You see it there on your screen. The seven month old child was inside unharmed, but police say the suspect was gone. Just again, by the grace of God, uh, the child was located unharmed. I mean, a, a car is replaceable, but a seven month old baby certainly is not. So we're just we're grateful that it turned out like it did. If you do have any information that can help E-Town Police, you can leave an anonymous tip with Harding County Crime Stoppers. You see the number there on your screen. It's 270-765-4125. If your information leads to a suspect, you could receive a reward of up to $1,000. Now to the city's latest effort to improve mental health in Metro Louisville. $1.7 million in federal funding is coming to the city and will be used to address trauma, expand services, and reach people who typically don't know where to go to find help. Ian Hartwit details where that money is going and how the Latinx community will benefit in a big way. Trauma-informed mental health counseling is now available at all eight neighborhood place locations across the city of Louisville. The city's also funding a 23-year-old nonprofit, La Casita Center, specifically focused on Latinx Louisvillians. Todos somos Louisville. Karina Barrias, La Casita's executive director, says they receive between 2,000 and 3,000 phone calls a month from people trying to connect to services like food assistance, legal aid, and counseling. This is funding work that we are already doing. We are one of the very few agencies in the city that is providing uh, mental health services free of charge for families. I'm excited just working with La Casita. Um, you realize the lack of support and the lack of resources there is for mental health services. A lot of immigrants come over here and obviously don't have documents. And so when they are needing these mental health services, um, they have nowhere to go. Neighborhood Place joins them in offering those free mental health services. The extra money funds counselors for the next two years. To create a one-stop shop where we work with our community to provide blended and accessible health, education, employment, and human services that support children and families in their progress towards self-sufficiency. The mayor here saying Louisville should know about mental health's importance in healing from violence. We have to have a greater awareness of the importance of mental health services to all people across our entire city. A message echoed in Spanish. Y tenemos que tener una mayor conciencia de los impactos que tienen los traumas mentales en la vida de las personas. These new services are funded through a federal grant and leftover American Rescue Plan funds. If you want to learn more about the services offered by Neighborhood Place or La Casita Center, you can find them on the article for this story on our website, whas11.com. Anyone in Louisville has access to free mental health services through the Office for Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods. To schedule an appointment, call this number. It's 502-901-0100. Happening today, Louisville's jail is explaining its new harm reduction efforts designed to prevent fatal overdoses in and outside of the jail. It added another free Narcan vending machine to the jail's exit lobby. This will allow people leaving Metro Corrections to have some access to the overdose reversal medication. Since last year, the jail has made Narcan available to inmates in every dorm for free, and they say it's been successful. We must recognize that substance use and mental illness are disorders that require treatment. These are no different than diabetes or hypertension. Together with our community partners, LMDC hopes to provide individuals the necessary tools that are proven to save lives and equitably assist individuals with access to recovery. The new vending machine is the result of a partnership with the University of Kentucky, and here's why. According to a study, people released from correctional facilities are 40 times more likely to die from an overdose than someone in the general population. Today, a major elections case heard in the Kentucky Supreme Court. Oral arguments were presented on whether or not the state's new voting maps are unconstitutional. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled in 2019 that partisan gerrymandering claims were not able to be decided in court, but the ruling left room for state constitutions to provide standards and guidance individually. So Kentucky Democrats have sued after the legislature passed the maps claiming gerrymandering or drawing of the boundaries to favor one party. A Franklin County judge sided with the GOP in this late last year, saying they did not violate the state constitution. The maps were enacted in 2022 for the Kentucky State House and the U.S. Congress. During today's oral arguments, the lack of president for these types of cases was brought up. 
There is absolutely no evidence in the record that this kind of sophisticated gerrymander happened in 2012. There was no scientific evidence showing this kind of durable gerrymander. Uh, you know, look, the technology behind drawing districts has evolved so rapidly that, uh, as, as Justice Kagan said, these are not your grandfather's, let alone the framers, gerrymanders. We can go house by house now in a way that wasn't even possible 10, 20, 30 years ago to ensure these gerrymanders are durable and that the legislature is not responsive to the view of the public. The Republican Party of Kentucky released a statement on the lawsuit today, calling it an attempt to manipulate the political process and an attempt for Andy Bashir to save face. A decision in this case is not expected for another few months. We've got an update to this large fire that we told you about last week. Tonight, owners of Osaka, the sushi restaurant in downtown Louisville, are fighting back against an emergency demolition order. Osaka, which is on Market Street, was severely damaged in that massive fire last week. Now, Metro Codes and Regulations says the building is in imminent danger of failure or collapse. Inspectors posted a note on the front door of the restaurant saying it could be demolished as early as today. But the owner of the business is hoping to stop that demolition and has asked the judge for an emergency restraining order. According to court documents, they've hired their own engineering firm to inspect the building. That firm says only 20% of the building is damaged and it does not need to be demolished. That case has been assigned to Judge Julie Kalin. When the new Blue Oval SK Battery Park is complete in Harding County, the area will see major growth. We are talking tens of thousands of people, according to a new study. Harding County released a report today detailing the economic impacts. The 208-page study was commissioned by the Chamber of Commerce and aims to better understand the growth the county would undergo and what would need to be done to meet that need. The study says Harding County populations expected to surge by 22,000 people. All of those people, of course, will need somewhere to live. There is an anticipated need of over 8,000 housing units. Almost 4,000 students will be enrolling in school from K to 12th. And the study says there's an expected di direct payroll of $3.63 billion from the Battery Park from 2026 to 2035. That, of course, would be a major boost to the local economy. Some new luxury apartments are coming to Charlestown, Indiana. Forest Edge Apartments will be the first new luxury apartments built in the city in the last 20 years. The complex is going to have 248 units with one, two, and three bedroom options. The developer says apartment amenities will include a resort-style pool, fire pits, a fitness center, and much more. They're set to go up near Charlestown State Park, which is just 25 minutes away from downtown Louisville. Groundbreaking for that project is set for September 27th. Well, it is WHAS 11 night at the Bats game. Yeah. Slugger Field getting ready to host all of us. And what beautiful weather for it. It's going to be very nice out there. Here we have a celebrity throwing out the first pitch <laughs> and everything, too. Yeah, our sports director, Ken Spencer, will be throwing out the first pitch. So I'm sure he's a little bit nervous here over the next couple of hours. <laughs> Should he be? <laughs> 635 is uh, the first pitch officially for the start of the game. And it's the final homestand for the Bats. And so get out there and enjoy uh, some of the last uh, baseball of the summer season. Season. The 79 at Bowman Field, 80 at Louisville International. Humidity low at 30% as we look over Slugger Field here. And the fantastic weather continues. Not hearing many complaints about the weather pattern we've been in. Perhaps that it's just a little bit too dry. Upper 70s to around 80 degrees over the metro and similar temperatures. Mostly in the upper 70s and most of this evening will be in the 70s. While the sun is up after sunset will fall pretty quickly into the 60s and 50s overnight. Active weather staying well off to our west. Area of High pressure will continue to block away any rain chances for a long time. Uh, here's the 60s at around 8 o'clock, and then overnight we'll see those low temperatures back down to the 50s again. So on the cool side as we get started for our Wednesday. Wonderful Wednesday. Temperatures in the lower to mid 80s, a little bit above normal with a light south breeze and some more sunshine across the area. So your first pitch forecast, uh, sunshine and temperatures in the 70s for the ball game. Overnight low temps in the upper 50s will be in the 70s at lunchtime tomorrow and again a little bit warmer with that high up to 85 degrees. Again, I'll show you eventually when we'll see a rain chance uh, back around Kentuckyana coming up in just a few minutes.